What's up, Happy Fabricators? In this video, we're gonna answer another frequently asked question that I get, and that is, what are your settings for welding thick aluminum? Now, I'm gonna make the assumption that you really don't care what my settings are. You just wanna know how to make a good weld on thick aluminum. Kinda of like the guy at the hardware store buying a drill. He really doesn't want a drill. He wants what he believes the drill can execute on, whether that be drilling a hole or driving a screw home. The only problem is, whether it be settings or that drill, solely having possession of these things isn't gonna get the job done proper. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to put your best foot forward on your prep work, your techniques, and your settings so that you can get the best results possible welding thick aluminum, even if you have a small or lower end machine. Okay, so what I have here is two pieces of half inch 6061 aluminum, and we are going to do a full pen butt weld on these. I'm gonna be using my Prime Weld TIG 225. Now, not to worry if you don't have this same machine, the settings, principles, prep work, and techniques will still apply to any other machine. This specific Prime Weld machine here we're gonna be using is a 225 amp machine, and just to make it a little fair to some more common lower end smaller machines, I'm gonna run the amperage at 200 amps. There's a lot of smaller machines out there that top off at 200 amps. So just to prove a point, we're gonna be running our machine at 200 amps today as if that's the max it could do. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to do to give us the best advantage for this weld is some prep work. The thing that is going to give us the most advantage right off the bat is to bevel this thing out so we get a full penetration weld. Now it all depends on what kind of access you have to the weld. And so if you only have access to the top side of the weld, your bevel might look something like this, where you go in just from the top side and you grind down that bevel. But we're gonna be able to get to both sides of this one. So what we're gonna do is something that looks more like this, where we've got a bevel on the top and a bevel on the bottom. The other thing we're gonna wanna do is just to clean it up in general. So you wanna take some acetones or solvents and get all the oils and contaminants out of this thing possible. So we're gonna bevel this thing out. What I like to do for a lot of my prep work beveling is just a good 40 or 36 grit flap disc and some sort of lubricant. I like Johnson's paste wax. You can use other cutting waxes that work really good for grinding aluminum. It's gonna let you take a lot more material away without loading up your disc. The reason I like Johnson specifically is it seems to be a little lighter wax and if you have some that gets left down in the joint, it seems to burn out a little easier than some of those cutting waxes. So we'll bevel this guy up real quick and then move on to the next step. Okay, so now that we got our heavy grinding done, I'm going to pull off my heavier disc and we stuck on like a 60 grit or something a little finer that is not impregnated with wax here so that we can take and just kind of clean the surface of this off and it'll help pull a little bit of that wax. Just real quick like that. Now, you are not always going to have the luxury of being able to get to both sides of your joint or even being able to get an angle grinder down there as easy as I just did here. But there are other options. You can get in there with a carbide burr. I still use the Johnson's Paste Wax with my carbide burrs because it keeps those from loading up as well. And then I will go in with another burr that does not have wax in it at the very end and just kind of like scrape the top off just to kind of clean that up a little bit. But we're to this point. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run over this with quick little Scotch-Brite or stainless brush, whatever's available to you to take the oxide layers off the skin that we have sitting right here still. And then just to polish out these edges, we're gonna give this joint the best chance possible. You don't need fancy tools, you can do this with stainless brush as well, but it's what we got. So now that our joint is completely prepped, we are gonna move on to the next thing that you wanna look at, which is your torch setup. So this is the setup that I use pretty much on a daily basis. I've got a gas lens with a number five cup on here. That's kind of my daily grind. I use it for most everything. But when I'm welding thick aluminum, uh, the first thing you want to consider is a larger tungsten. I like to jump up to an eighth of an inch. This, your standard 332nd tungsten is definitely not going to hold the amperage that you're going to need to carry to be able to weld this thick aluminum. So I like to run just standard call it with aluminum most of the time. Sometimes I'll use a gas lens for thinner stuff just because it's already together and on it and I'm lazy and I don't want to put it on the other guy. And then I like to run a number six cup when I'm doing big thick aluminum. So now we got our torch set up. We're going to 
prep our tungsten and I'm going to show you a quick little secret. You've got an ugly blobber q-tip on the end of your big old tungsten here. I have a real special way on how to clean this off. I know I'm going to get some flack for my methods here, but if I'm being tr perfectly honest, this is how I clean my tungsten. There you go. Good as new, no more boogers on it. Simple as that. If we're really worried about it, we can go over to our welder and crank it all the way over to electrode positive, light it up, ball that tungsten up a little more. Now people are gonna be like, oh no, it's an inverter welder, don't ball it. But it's what I like to do and makes good welds, so. See, something like that right there is my favorite tip for thick aluminum. Nice smooth ball on the end of it. Okay, so now that we got our material prepped and our torch properly assembled, we're gonna look at the settings that we're gonna be using here. Now, like I said before, don't have this thing running right now so you can hear me, but we're gonna set our current to a maximum of 200 amps, to be fair to other lower dollar machines that are in that amp range. And then I'm gonna take my frequency, which I would normally run up in the 120 hertz range, and I'm gonna drop that down to probably in the 60 hertz range. That's gonna kind of widen out that puddle and just kind of help spread that heat out with that thick material. The other thing I'm gonna do is I normally run my AC balance around the 30% EN range and I'm gonna bump that back just a little bit to probably 40, 45 so that I get just a little more electrode positive and that's gonna bring a little more heat into the surface of that plate, just kind of helps soak a little more heat into the part, especially when you got that thick material. The last thing we're gonna do before we start laying down some beads on this thing is we are going to give it a little bit of preheat. Especially since we are limited on our amperage, if we bring the ambient temperature of the part itself up to around 250 degrees or so, that is going to help us substantially to achieve good penetration and just help the weld flow overall. So we've got a couple options when it comes to preheating your part up. You can either take something like this, you can take a little map gas or a propane torch and fire that guy up and work your joint over for a little while until that gets up to 250-ish degrees, a little more maybe, and you wanna make sure that you're heating up a little ways around the outside of that weld too because especially with aluminum, it's a great heat sink and if your material out here is cold, it's just gonna suck all the heat out of that joint and you're not really gonna get anywhere. So you wanna get the joint and a little bit of the surrounding area up to that temperature as well. The other option you have is if your part is small enough, you could throw it in the oven. Now the last option is an infrared heat lamp. This little guy right here, and this is one of my favorite things to use for this because I can plug it in, especially if your part is too big to fit in the oven, you can bring this to the part. And I like using this not just for thick, clean aluminum, but especially for casting repairs or cast aluminum like that. You can, I can set my part underneath this thing, let it heat up, and then do my welding, and then I can take it and put it back under it and actually let it cool cycle slower so that it's not just cooling off too fast and potentially causing other delaminations on a part like that. So that's not necessarily gonna be the case when you've got good clean aluminum. But if you're doing cast aluminum repairs, especially on thick aluminum, another thing that's gonna be important is that you not just preheat, but you also do a little bit of post heat and let that thing cool down as slow as possible and let things shrink as evenly as possible. So I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in one of these guys. But for the sake of this video, I think we're just gonna run with our little propane torch here. Now, when you're getting your piece up to material, uh, you can either get a digital thermometer like I have here, or there are heat pens that you can get that melt at specific temperatures. I can leave some links to the description for those as well, because aluminum can be funny about overheating as well. When you run your more common alloys above 450 degrees for a duration longer than five minutes, it will start losing some of its molecular properties that deal with strength and ductility and all that geeky stuff. Okay, so I left about a sixteenth of an inch gap here in between these pieces of material and then I hit them with the preheat. As for technique, we're going to strike our arc up here and let it dwell for just a little bit before we start moving. This is gonna allow us to burn off those oxides off the surface and just establish a puddle before you start moving. <laughs> 
once you start moving, something that's critical, especially on thick aluminum, is to make sure that each individual dab wets completely out. So what that is usually going to be is holding for that extra half a second until the profile of that weld flattens out and the toes of your welds transition evenly into the parent material. Now once you get your multiple passes in there and your groove is completely filled, what we're going to do is flip this guy over and do a little more prep work. So you can see how the weld penetrated into our gap here and kind of left these little stalactites for lack of better terms. What we're going to do is take our carbide burr and go into the back side of our joint and grind down to the lowest point of those little jagged edges. What this is going to do is make sure that when we go to do our passes on the back side, we know that we're going to be getting good even penetration throughout the joint. So here's a good example of what we had and what we're looking for. So we'll grind the rest of this joint out and then proceed with our passes on the other side. So something else to take note of, when you go to do the pass on your opposing side, you'll probably not need to use as much amperage because the ambient temperature of your part will already be up to a higher temperature. So we'll get this thing all cut up here and do a quick etch test and see what kind of results we get. Okay, so I got this thing polished up. I did a light etch on it. I don't know if you can see it. So on this side over here, we have our 4043 root. You can kind of see the perimeter of it right there. And then our 5356, which is right here, kind of makes a little arc where we ground out with our die grinder and comes back into here. But we had full penetration. We don't have any air in there. Looks good. It's interesting to me that the 5356 has a similar color and the 4043 contrasts a little more with the etch. I don't know, not a chemist. But as you can see, we don't have any cracking or any air pockets in there. We got a nice clean full penetration weld. So let's see if we can bend these things apart and see what kind of results we got. So we're gonna to pull towards our 4043 first. And that's looking pretty good. It actually didn't want to bend at the weld either. It bent right below the weld. So now let's bend towards our 5356 here. Half inch aluminum doesn't want to bend too much. Not without a longer lever arm. And there we are. Once again, we bent below the weld. We've got our 4043 on the right side and our 5356 on the left. No delaminations. Looking pretty good. So this was a fun little experiment. I always have fun playing around with these things. I didn't see really any difference in performance wise between the two alloys. I just kind of more did it for experimental purposes. They both fit into the material really good and we had no delaminations within the weld. So I don't know if I mentioned before, this is 6061 that we were welding here and we got some good results out of it. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully next time you'll be armed with a better approach on how to weld thick aluminum, even if you have a lower amp machine. So once again, if you wanna see more fabrication content, click some of the links that are gonna pop up here. If you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. It's free to do so. And go build something, guys.